our landscape, balled up into an individual, the sum total of all the shit we put up with, and all the glory we beheld. The work, the walk, the fire, the memories recalled. All a part of me now. Hell, I could have stayed at home. December 26, 2020. 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Good morning, guys. It's Kevin out here in the woods this morning. And I know it might look just like it looked last video, but believe it or not, it's a week later in Pennsylvania and all the snow melted we had last time and we got a new dumping of snow about the same as last time except this time there's some ice under it and it's 16 degrees Fahrenheit so uh, cold outside so the first business of order here is going to be firewood this naughty little girl's being naughty there we go I think I got it probably all she's getting. I don't care what anybody says, these are the only things you need to start a fire anywhere in the world under any conditions. A little bit of Vaseline, Bic lighter, some cotton balls, and a little stub of two by four there. So this isn't the best situation to demonstrate this to you, but we'll make do. Once you get it down into smaller sticks, you can just give it a little bump with your hand and it'll go right through. Just looking to make small kindling here. It's not brain surgery. They don't all have to be the same size or as small as the other ones, but you definitely want some that are at least that small, even in half if you can. If it's really wet, that would be perfect. You can see how fast you can do this once you get good at it. You get stuff that small. If it's really wet or covered with snow, you can make a couple of small little feather sticks just to help you out. Nothing too fussy, just a little bit more sur surface area for the flames to catch when they start best surface to work on here. Just something ugly like that is fine. We'll do one more. I'm not looking for fine curls or anything. You don't need it here. Not with the Vaseline. You can see just how much that little bit of two by four yields. You don't need that much to get a fire started. Most important part is you need dry wood underneath so that the ground don't just suck out all the heat. Put the uh, inside of the wood up. Make sure you have a bearing block or something to keep the sticks up off of the cotton balls. That'll work just fine. If I had more wood, I'd put another piece down, but that'll be just fine. If everything's really wet, you're definitely going to want the Vaseline. Not necessary. Um, Take at least one cotton ball and get a good bit of Vaseline on this. Of course, you can carry these in plastic bags if you want. I like to put that one down first. And then take another one without Vaseline on it. Fluff it up. Put that on top. Take out your lighter or your ferro rod. Either one will work at this point. Give it a little flick. Hold your feather sticks over top of it. Uh-oh. Make sure they don't go out. Get your pile of sticks. Lay them on there. Give it a little wind. Once you got those sticks going, you're pretty much 
safe sailing from there. You can go ahead and throw the bigger guys on. Might seem a little bit silly, but these little pocket fellows are really nice if you don't want to get your face down in the smoke there. They work great. Just don't push them back like this. If this heats up, you're gonna brand yourself. Let's just go for a little walk, shall we? God, is it cold. Gotta get moving again. That's what I'm looking at. We're down in the valley today. I'm just gonna follow the creek down, see what we can see. Creek gets jammed up here. Big old oak fell down along with some other trees. Jammed her up. She slows down. Almost to a trickle there. No worries, can't stop water. Water will always find a way. I mean, if we're to believe the scientists, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, just as old as the sun, a little bit younger. And they say life evolved 3.8 billion years ago. Homo sapiens came down out of the trees around 6 million years ago. If you're going to believe the, uh, the big heads, the scientists, but that's what they tell us. And slowly but surely, those apes that came down out of the trees evolved into us. Hey guys, it's the abominable snowman. They say about 100,000 years ago, we were anatomically correct for what we are today. And somewhere between 10,000 and 6,000 years ago, we started civilization. But that water was eroding these hills long before we were here. Oh, we gotta go up a little bit here. It's too steep down there for me to follow the creek and I don't have uh, wet boots on. So I can't walk in it. Gonna walk up a little and then we'll straighten out. And if I see anything interesting or think of anything interesting to say, I'll get with you guys then. Ow. Speaking of the path of least resistance, there's an old logging road, and that's what I'm gonna use. Uh-huh, much nicer. Here's the old shooting range. We used to shoot these metal targets from over there on the opposite side of the creek. Ding. Still following the creek down here on a little game trail. If I spin, I got a long way to fall. I know it doesn't look like much on camera, but she's steep through here, no doubt. Here we go, we're headed downhill. Oh. All right, just like we were kids again, playing on the hilltops. So there's where I came from. I know it doesn't look that steep on camera, but I promise you, it's a long way down here. Fortunately for me, there is a road up ahead and there's an old dead end road. If you can see the wire there, and it travels up there. The road's actually named after us, Kevich Road, no bullshitting. I'll tell you the story some other time. My dad built little bridges like this and bigger all over Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia. I helped him do a lot of these little guys. So one of the closest calls I ever had with the chainsaw was something just like this. I was probably 13 years old my dad brought me down this old road in a uh, skid steer, put me in the bucket. I know, I know, Safety Sally's gonna come out and cancel my ass, but that's what we did. He put me in the bucket with the chainsaw and I hadn't thought about it, but I 
cut some of the limb off of this side just so I was dealing with less. But that was enough weight when I severed that piece. The line flung the tree up in the air, bringing the chainsaw back right towards my forehead. I just had a little, just had enough strength as a little boy to uh, hold that back from hitting my head. Of course, no safety equipment, no eyeglasses, no helmet, no nothing to speak of. I'm not proud of it, I'm just saying. It's something I went through. Can you imagine what the early colonists must have seen when they looked at these forests? Old first growth, three, four times as big as these trees. Quakers mostly were settling Pennsylvania in the early days. Back when men were men and women were women, no doubt. Also back when life was miserable. Let's not kid ourselves. Those boys and girls were suffering. Suffering. I'll take modern tech, thank you. Doesn't hurt to get back to the old ways though. Sometimes doesn't. It doesn't hurt. At least I'm warm now. Just my fingertips are cold a little bit, but not much. Hopefully there'll be some coals and cook up some rice when I get back. Do a little chopping. I'll get with you guys in a bit. Brown rice, which I always thought was better for you, though I prefer white rice. But I heard Joe Rogan say recently that he was told um, that this is not as good for you as the white stuff. Who knows? Mm. Get a piece of that garlic. She'll let you know. Shout out to my mom. She makes the best creme brulee in the world, I'm convinced. And since we couldn't have a proper Christmas uh, this year where everybody gets to see each other, she sent me some. And I'm going to dig into it in the woods. Why not? Best creme brulee in the world. Of course, I can't crush the top out here, but we're peasants, you know. We got to rough it a little. All right, now that we're back from the walk, let me give this technique one more go and see if I can get comfortable with it so that I can keep improving. Before I do that though, I just wanna say and make sure that everybody understands that the last title, which I've changed now, was just clickbaity stuff. Ben and I are not mad at each other. He didn't tell me I had shitty technique. It was just a joke. I think most of you understood that, but a few of you, I think, thought we were like rat beefing and he was going to respond and then I was going to respond back. So I guess this is my response back. I asked him for some tips, just so we're clear. He, um, he did say that I don't need to bend my knees when I pick up the axe, which I'm so grateful for because that made it so awkward. Um, he said I can keep my legs relatively straight. And he also said I don't have to keep the axe in front of me. I thought I had to pull the axe up like this. I'm used to kicking the axe out to my side when I bring it up like, like this. And he said, that's fine too. Just focus right now on really extending that axe out there. And Owen said something that was really helpful to me, um, which I'm gonna try to do today, which is just make it your own. Use those tips and techniques, but make it your own. You don't have to be so dogmatic about keeping your elbow over top of it. So let's give it a try. Lighter axe, shorter handle. Gloves are a little slippery. I think I'm gonna take those off. It is cold, but I'll warm up quick. All right, I'm gonna work on making a, oh, that's hard. I'm gonna make work on just making a proper notch, taking my time, just extending the ax out there. I do wanna know, does it, uh, does it not count if I don't do the patented bend exhale?
So I want to tell you a little story before I move on. When I was in eighth grade or going into eighth grade baseball, uh, a coach took me aside. I was the lead off batter and he tried to improve my swing a little bit so I'd have more power. I always just grounded through like short and third. I was real good with accuracy. So I would just put the ball where I want it and get on first base and I could usually steal second or third. But we were getting to the point where kids were getting stronger and bigger, everybody but me anyway. And he wanted me to hit the ball into the outfield. So he tried to change my swing a little bit, get me to step a little bit earlier so that I would connect with the ball at the perfect time. But it got in my head, what was subconscious and second nature to me was now something that was com so complicated, it had so many steps that I pretty much struck out my entire eighth grade year and it spoiled baseball for me. So, I, you know, don't let trying to learn a new te a new technique spoil it for you. I think the same goes for when you're learning the guitar. Um, I play the guitar or used to a lot more anyway. <laughs> If, they, if you want to learn jazz, they'll, they'll give you hell about wrapping your thumb around the fretboard. You see lots of rock stars play with their thumb around the, uh, the fretboard, so clearly technique is not everything. We're out here to have a good time, so you should have a good time. But me and Ben are not beefing, just so we're clear. All right, let's just work on making a proper notch here. the same spot twice. Wood is frozen. Notches are getting better anyway. I don't know if my form is. Last one. I hope you guys can still see over here. All right, I'm going to pull to the side now. See if I can still swing like that. There is more motion in that. For better or for worse, when you pull to the side, there's more motion in that. If you're going for speed, that's definitely not the way to do it. Look at that. I have to go here and then here, here and then here. Whereas if it's up, you see the Basque axes pretty much follow that form. All right, let's finish that off. Pop. 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 I actually love this little thing. My wife got this little canvas uh, sack meant for carrying firewood for me for my birthday one year. 
And I thought it was about the stupidest thing I'd ever seen. I'm like, who's going to use that to carry firewood? And, well, I'm the stupidest guy you've ever seen then because I think it's cool. Don't ask me where she got it, I don't know. This is all I can show you, this is what it says on it. you have to find it for yourselves. Well, that pretty much does it for today, guys. That's all the time I got, and um, I haven't cut that much cordwood this year. Uh, I got this little bit down here. I got about a rick and a quarter up at the main campsite, and a little bit, about half this much at a third site. So I was gonna stack it up for you guys all nice and neat, but... I just can't be bothered. This is what we got. All this. And that. Even if you don't do the whole core, don't be afraid to participate. I think even if you get out there and process one tree, fell it, limit, bucket, and split it, you're going to learn a whole lot about using an axe. See you guys on the next one.